class is now in session i'm professor hockey and today we will be recapping day nine of the second round of the stanley cup playoffs two games on the day both series with a chance of finishing tonight but neither would end up doing so in the first game it would be flyers versus islanders and the flyers would evade elimination with the 4-3 overtime victory to make the series 3-2 for the Islanders. This one would start off with a Matt Barzell goal from the Isles side, but then the Philadelphia Flyers would rattle off th- rattle off three straight coming from Giroux, his first of these playoffs, Van Riemsdyk, his first of these playoffs, and then Niskanen, also technically his first, but that one doesn't really matter as much as Niskanen is not really a player expected to score. But then the Islanders, as they've done so many times in these playoffs, they manage to make that comeback. They get a goal from Nelson, they get a goal from Broussard, and then it goes into overtime. Overtime, though, will be the on the flyer slide like it was back in game two, and it would be Scott Lawton getting the tip in goal for the win for the Flyers. The good news for the Flyers, besides the fact that Giroux and Van Riemsdyk have finally scored on the sh- uh, showed up on the scoreboard, I said at the end of last game that Giroux would have to do something if the Flyers want even a slight chance to come back in this series, and that he did. He scores this goal. The Flyers end up winning. But the good news, of course, is that they have been improving here in these past couple of games. Last game, while it was still a loss, it was the first time they actually managed to break 30 shots against the or over 30 shots against the Islanders and almost 40 shots in just a regulation game. So that was nice to see. And here tonight, a very good start to this game. The first couple of periods, you could definitely say were Philadelphia controlled. They got that 3-1 lead, and all was looking good. But the bad news that has to come out of it is that the Flyers just cannot seem to hold a lead here against this Islanders team. The two victories the Flyers have in this series have both been in overtime, and yet both of those games, they've actually scored three goals and led by three goals in Game 2, and here two goals in Game 5, and yet overtime was still required and technically with a couple of bounces the other way for the islanders they could have potentially swept this series or won it in game five here tonight if the islanders had just scored an empty uh an overtime goal on themselves so the flyers when they get these leads when they play well enough to get these leads they actually have to hold on to them they cannot keep letting the islanders come back into these games if we can see a good performance from the Flyers, like a 4-1 victory from the Flyers in Game 6. I'll, I could have faith in them going into an all-deciding Game 7, but right now, these, these games are just so close, it really could go either way. The good news for the Islanders is the fact that, of course, they're showing such resiliency coming back from uh, these deficits, and it's just certain players really popping up here for the Islanders. It seems like Brock Nelson, he doesn't have a ton of goals in these playoffs, although six is quite respectable, but he seems to just score when the Islanders need him most. And then on this Broussard goal, this is an absolutely beautiful play from Cal Clutterbuck, of all people. I mean, he he makes this this single-handed play, goes for the beautiful pass over. Broussard is, for whatever reason, ready for the to receive this pass, to put it in the net, to tie this game up at three. It was just a crazy play that, you know, the Islanders don't get a lot of credit for being the most skilled team because they play mostly sort of a defensive style. And while they don't have the skill of a Tampa Bay Lightning, they still have some got some decent skill on their roster. And while you don't expect Clutterbuck to be the one to show it, he ends up doing so and plays a bit of a hero for the Islanders, even though it was for naught because of the overtime loss. But the Islanders, this clutch goal scoring, if they can move on later in these playoffs, will really come in handy. The bad news for the Islanders is a few things. The first one, of course, the fact that, you know, Game 4, it wasn't great for the Islanders, even though they did still end up winning. And now here in Game 5, also not very good for the Islanders. It's rare that we've seen two bad games. Well, I guess Game 4 wasn't terrible, but two not-so-great games from the Islanders in a row. Usually after one not-so-great game, they'll respond with a fantastic victory. They only have four losses in these playoffs, and after each of those four losses, they've come out sort of uh, just dominating the opponents in the following game. We'll see if that happens in Game 6, but two games in a row not looking all that great makes it seem as though they're letting Philly get a footing in this series, which is not going to bode well for them in these past in these next potential couple of games of this series. The second thing, Varlamov 
comes back in nets after a great performance from Grice in Game 4. It wasn't a surprise that Varlamov gets a start in Game 5, but he wasn't particularly great. He didn't have a chance, really, on this first goal from Giroud, as it was on a tip, as well as the Lawton goal, which was also on a tip. But he could have potentially had this Van Riemsdyk shot, and he absolutely should have had this Niskanen shot. And so this was a situation for Varlamov that it wasn't that great of a game, and it does begin to beg the question, should Grice actually get the start for Game 6? Varlamov had played basically every game here for the Islanders up to the point in game two where he ended up getting pulled. Grice was very good in relief in that situation and so he earned himself a game four start. He was very good in said game four and now with this pretty meh performance from Varlamov here in game five, a game six Grice start could be possible and we'll see what ends up doing but don't want to have this goalie controversy this late into a series because if you make the wrong choice, you could get end up being very punished for that. And the final thing, just a small thing, Barzell ended up getting injured in this game. It gets a high stick right into the face. This is something that I could technically see him being out long term for if, you know, it's the worst case scenario. But best case scenario, he could very well just be back for next game. But it is something to keep in mind. The following game of the day was Golden Knights versus Canucks. The Canucks trying to stave off elimination and they managed to do it with a 2-1 victory to make the series 3-2 Golden Knights. Good news for the Canucks. They end up going with Thatcher Demko in this game. I first, I was sort of appalled that they'd end up going away from Markstrom, but it turns out Markstrom is unfit to play, and so it actually ended up being Louis Domingue backing up Demko tonight, and I thought this was just the end of the Canucks season here and now, but Demko was surprisingly not only good, but fantastic in this game, which was basically the only reason why the Canucks actually ended up winning and staying alive here. A fantastic game from Demko, reminiscent of the performance of Markstrom back in Game 2, but Demko had even less offensive support. The Canucks scored at least four, I believe five goals actually, in that Game 2. Demko here tonight only had the two goals from the Canucks, so he had to be close to perfect, only lets in the one goal to Shea Theodore, and that's really the big thing, it was it was actually, I should say, Theodore gets the first goal of this game, then it was quickly tied by Besser, and eventually a Pedersen goal early in the third period would be enough to win this game, but that brings us to the bad news for the Canucks, is basically everything else. The fact of the matter remains here is that while Demko was amazing and stole this game, the Canucks just looked pretty lifeless in this one. The Golden Knights sort of just ran over them, and while the Canucks get the victory, I won't think they're necessarily super happy with this. I don't know if this necessarily bodes well moving on into this series. The Canucks have yet to really have a game in which they looked better than the Golden Knights in this series, and they maybe should be counting their lucky stars that they even have a couple of games on the Knights. The good news for the Knights, it's kind of hard to say. There isn't really a good news, bad news situation here. Obviously, the bad news is that the Knights ended up losing, but they seemingly have done everything right. The, the reason why the NHL has these seven-game series and not just, let's say, you know, a best-of-one series or a best-of-three series in the playoffs is because there's so much variance in the game of hockey. Many people say that, you know, the uh, classic cliche that any given team can win on any given night, and that is true because of you know a lot of teams are obviously of similar skill level but it's also true because the game of hockey has so much variance within 60 minutes that really anyone can win because anything can happen bounces go one way bounces go the other way and that was the case here for the in, tonight for the golden knights this is why we play these seven game series so that even outplaying the canucks consistently they're only up 3-2 in this series i still believe they'll be able to close this one out which is the good news uh but they'll have to hopefully really push, them. they have to try and make sure that they can overcome necessarily bad luck or anything like that or good luck on the Canucks side and close out this series because it's still technically possible to lose. Anything can happen in game six and a potential game seven, but that will do it for this recap. In terms of predictions, I have said the Islanders would win in six games and now this uh, prediction is looking very alive. If the Islanders win the next one, that would be a perfect prediction and that brings us to the Golden Knights Canucks one. This one I also said the Golden Knights would win in six games and very, it seems as though the Golden Knights could very well win game six, and that would also be a perfect prediction. Class dismissed.